Coming up next, accelerate your C++ environment with Erica and Marion. How are you doing, my friends? Hello. Doing good? Fantastic. <laughs> we'll take it away. All right. All right. Um, well, I'm uh, Marion Luparu, uh, and I'm Erica Sweet. We are both uh, program managers in this Plus Plus team, and for the next half hour, we'll take you through a tour of everything that's new and exciting with Visual Studio 2019 yeah. if you're a C++ Plus developer. Uh, throughout the session, um, if you want to delve deeper into some of the uh, specific topics, we have ak.ms links that you can uh, follow. And uh, if you have any questions, hashtag VS2019 uh, on Twitter, and we'll try to get to all of the questions, some of them even in, uh, in the session later on. All right, so the first thing you'll see when you open Visual Studio 2019 will be uh, the start window, uh, which basically brings together all of the entry points that you commonly use when you use Visual Studio. So whether you are a Git first user, or you like browsing on disk for your solutions, or you often open the same ones, uh, start window brings them all together and kind of streamlines that, that experience. And uh, rest assured that after you make the selection in this UI, uh, behind this window, you will get the Visual Studio UI you are familiar with. Now, before I continue, um, I want to warn you that if you are a happy Visual Studio 2017 user or Visual Studio 15 user, um, throughout the session and really throughout the day, the thought of uh, upgrading to 2019 might cross your mind. Um, and um, you know, change sometimes uh, can be can add some stress, and uh, even when change is good. So before we jump in and talk about all the new things we're doing. Uh, I want to take a bit of time to tell you about the work we've been doing inside uh, the product to make sure that uh, Visual Studio 2019 upgrade uh, is stress-free and pain-free for you. So I'll start. The, the first thing is that you can install the IDE side by side with any other version of Visual Studio. And um, you can switch back and forth between the two IDEs uh, at any time while you explore um, the latest IDE. And when you're ready to make the switch, uh, you can install Visual Studio 2019 IDE um, and bring all of your source code into uh, the IDE without having to also upgrade the toolset. Uh, and that's important because in uh, large teams, um, upgrading the toolset sometimes requires some uh, coordination. So if you're using 2015 or 2017 ID uh, uh, compilers, uh, with a 2019 ID, you can install those on the machine and continue building your projects in the same way you used to with older um, IDEs. And uh, once the whole team is ready to come, uh, you can consider upgrading the toolset as well. And once you do consider upgrading the toolset, um, with 2019, it has never been easier uh, to upgrade your toolset because of binary compatibility. Um, if specifically you have third-party libraries that are built with previous versions of the toolset, for example, 2015 or 2017, uh, you can take your source code, build it with 2019, and then bring all these binaries together, uh, and your application will continue to run as expected. And last but not least, if uh, any of your third-party libraries uh, are open source projects, um, the best way to acquire these libraries is through VC Package. VC Package is a popular C++ package manager, and um, it brings full support for the Visual Studio 2019 uh, toolset. If uh, you're not familiar with uh, VC Package, these are the three commands you have to run to get started and have uh, uh, your, uh, one of the open source library fully set up on your uh, dev box ready for consumption. I hope this, uh, this reasons uh, give you the, uh, the peace of mind and uh, the comfort that upgrading to 2019 uh, is pain free. And now we can delve deeper into some of the improvements we're making. And we'll start with um, the MSVC toolset. Uh, so we have a new version of the MSVC toolset in uh, Visual Studio 2019, uh, which brings uh, improvements in four important areas. Conformance, build throughput, runtime performance, and code analysis. And we'll delve deeper into, into these. Uh, and we'll start with conformance, where uh, the new uh, compiler toolset builds on the success of the previous version. Uh, and comes with a full C++17 conformance in the compiler, as well as the most complete C++17 standard library implementation to date. But uh, we didn't stop there, and we're 
Currently, the team is actively working on adding C++ 20 support. The C++ 20 standard is a huge standard for C++ developers, and uh, it will be likely approved later on next year. Uh, the team is already working on adding support in the compiler libraries IDE. And um, we already have some functionality uh, in the uh, update that you're getting today. And we continue working on this, and future updates of Visual Studio will add even more C20 features. So stay tuned. When it comes to build speeds, this is uh, an ongoing area where uh, we, we make lots of efforts to, to improve. And in uh, 2019, the focus is the linker. Um, we rethought the way uh, we manage debug information and um, with the work you're going to get in uh, Visual Studio 2019, whether you're using uh, the debug full or debug fast link switches, uh, you can get up to 2.4x uh, performance improvements in link time. In addition to that, um, if you want to speed up your build even further, um, you can uh, install Incredibuild and with um, uh, you can get up to 16 cores of parallel builds for free. Another thing that uh, you get for free by recompiling your source code with uh, the latest MSVC toolset uh, is the runtime performance improvements uh, made by uh, the addition of new optimizations or uh, improvements in existing optimizations. So in our uh, uh, internal benchmarkings, we've seen uh, improvements of up to 2.8% by just recompiling your source code. And um, these are just uh, the things you get by default. There are additional knobs inside Visual Studio 2019 uh, that allows you to uh, get even more performance improvements. For example, OpenMP, CMD extension, uh, more aggressive inlining, and uh, the reduction in size uh, for exception handling. Uh, these are all things that uh, you can turn on by uh, specifying specific switches. And for more details, you can go to the aka.ms link below. Code analysis also comes with uh, fresh checks. And in addition to the concurrency checks, for which I have an example on the slide over here, um, code analysis assists you with writing uh, core routine code as well as um, uh, aiding in finding lifetime issues with uh, dangling pointers or references or uh, use after move checks. In summary, these are the improvements in the tool set uh, in conformance, build throughput, code analysis, and runtime performance. And um, what you're getting is the best C++ compiler tool set uh, available for targeting Windows. Uh, overall, Visual Studio gives you the best tools for uh, developing Windows applications. But Visual Studio does not stop there. Many of you also target additional platforms. And when you do so, uh, you move to a different operating system sometimes or a different uh, developer environment. Um, and really, with Visual Studio 2019, you don't have to do that. Inside Visual Studio 2019, you can target all of, the, all of these platforms uh, from the comfort of a single IDE. It's very easy to get started. Um, and if you um, are using C++ tools um, of, of that you're familiar with, you don't have to stop using them. For example, Clang format, um, if you're using it today, you can continue using it because Visual Studio has built-in support for Clang format. And the same way, um, if you're uh, building with Clang LLVM or GCC, Visual Studio has support for all of these compilers, not just MSVC. And once you're inside the IDE, you get a familiar and rich experience of uh, the top uh, IntelliSense and refactoring operations, uh, build uh, uh, integration, as well as uh, state-of-the-art debugging. But really, there's no better way to uh, show you this than, uh, than through a demo. So Erika, you want to take it away? Yeah. Uh, we can switch on over to show my screen now. Uh, so as Marion mentioned, with Visual Studio 2019, we have simplified the start window experience. To the left, you can still view your recently opened folders and projects. And to the right, you have four entry points to get into your code. You can clone or check out code from an online code repository, open an existing Visual Studio project or solution file, open a local folder, which supports any folder containing C++ code without ever generating Visual Studio projects and solution files, or create a new project. The new project dialog has also been simplified, so it is easier than ever to filter templates by language. 
target platform, or project type. In this demo, I'm going to be working with a cross-platform CMake application that runs on both Windows and Linux called SuperTux. So if I was starting from scratch, I could search for the CMake project template, but I already have a copy of the project saved locally on my machine, so I'm going to open it using the open folder experience. Visual Studio has native support for CMake, which means that you can open any folder containing a CMakeList.txt file and have a full IDE experience without ever generating Visual Studio project and solution files. To the right in my Solution Explorer, you can see that my file structure mirrors the layout of my files on disk. But Visual Studio also supports something called CMake Targets View, which is a more CMake-centric way of viewing your code, organized by target, and allows you to build a single target at a time, run code analysis on a target, or run code analysis on a single file, to name a few options. In Visual Studio, all of the CMake configuration that is normally done via the command line is moved into a CMake settings.json file. But with Visual Studio 2019, we have introduced a CMake settings editor as an alternative to editing that file directly. So here you can see I am prompted with a few properties for me to edit that will make it easier for you to get started with CMake. Um, there are some general ones like configuration name and type, um, some command arguments that are passed directly to CMake, and a new section called CMake variables and cache. So I've already generated my cache, but if I were to click here, I will be prompted with a list of all the CMake cache variables available for me to edit. And you can use this function functionality like you might use a tool like the CMake GUI to help diagnose issues with your CMake lists. Advanced variables per the CMake GUI are hidden by default, but I can click here to see the full list. And I can also filter variables by name. You can also use this functionality to modify the value of any variable you see here by simply clicking the value column and modifying it. Um, modified variables are automatically saved to the CMake settings.json file, and variables defined there are ultimately passed to CMake via the command line. So the only piece of configuration I needed to do to get this working for Windows was to pass CMake the path to my toolchain file. But if you're using VC Package, then VC Package now automa automatically integrates its toolchain file with Visual Studio so you can bypass this step completely. Um, if you haven't heard of it, VC Package is a command line package management tool for C and C++ libraries that runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And I was able to install all of the dependencies I needed to get SuperTux working on both Windows and Linux using VC Package. So quickly, all of the dependencies you see here could be installed with a simple command, VC Package install library name. To the left, we have a configuration manager where you can easily toggle between existing configurations or add a new one. We have template support for targeting IoT devices, remote Linux machines, MinGW Windows machines, and now in Visual Studio 2019, you can target an existing cache. So for a normal CMake project in Visual Studio, Visual Studio will generate and manage all of the details of your cache for you. But now you have the ability to point Visual Studio to an existing cache that was generated outside of the IDE and so that you or your preferred tools have complete control over your cache and your build tree. So for example, if you have a script that automates the way CMake is invoked, you can continue to use that alongside Visual Studio. I have already set up a Linux configuration targeting a Linux VM, so I'll go make that my active configuration, select the startup item, and while wow, this is running quickly in the background, um, you can see that the CMake settings editor for a remote Linux configuration is almost identical to the one for a local Windows configuration with a few additional properties exposed that are specific to a remote build. So for example, remote machine name, CMake will automatically pick up on any remote machines you've configured in Visual Studio. But if you need to add a new one, you can easily do this uh, in the Connection Manager and click Add. We don't have many restrictions on the distro that you're connecting to. All we require is SSH, uh, working C++ toolchain on the remote machine, GDB, and if you're using CMake, then a relatively recent version of CMake 
also on the remote machine, but with Visual Studio 2019, Visual Studio will now automatically detect if the machine you're connected to doesn't have CMake installed and can automatically deploy those binaries for you to the remote machine. So looks like this is done. So now if I toggle over to my VM, I will see SuperTux. Uh, but this is now a graphical application running in my VM, and I only have 15 minutes here with you. So I'm going to go ahead and switch right back to my Windows configuration. So I'll select x86 debug, again, the startup item. And so you can see that Visual Studio allows you to target multiple platforms easily from the comfort of a single IDE. Uh, the SuperTux game that I'm using is an open source project. You can find it on GitHub. And again, I used VC Package to install all the dependencies I needed on both Windows and Linux. So it looks like this was done building. And now we see SuperTux. Hopefully you can hear it too. <laughs> so story mode. I'll play it a little bit. still in debug mode, so it's a little slow sometimes, but once the game starts, it's usually good. All right, so this is SuperTux, uh, similar to other games you might have played before, but a good one. Um, I think I'm actually going to go into the options menu and turn the sound up a little bit. So options, go down to sound volume. And as I'm toggling through here with the arrow key, it looks like these volumes are not in order at all, like they're supposed to be. Uh, in contrast, you can see that these music volumes are increasing in order. So I think I'm going to try to figure out what's going on there. and quit. So control T brings up go to all, which is a way to easily filter your searches to lines, files, members, types. So I'm going to use F to limit my search to files and navigate over to the options menu.cpp file, which is where most of the logic surrounding the options menu takes place. And it looks like I have a to-do that I have not yet done to sort the sound volumes. So here I have a vector of strings called sound volumes, and I'm just going to sort it. So. Sound volumes. So normally, IntelliSense member list suggestions are sorted alphabetically. But with Visual Studio 2019, we have an entirely new experience for C++ developers called IntelliCode. And IntelliCode will use the context of your code to suggest uh, the most relevant suggestions, put them at the top of your list, and indicate them with a star, as you can see here. So here I'm being prompted with begin. And then as I continue coding, I'm prompted with end, which shows that my IntelliCode suggestions are changing based on the context of my code. Uh, IntelliCode trains over numerous real-world projects, including open source projects on GitHub with over 100 stars, and for this reason can give great suggestions for commonly used libraries. I'm also going to pass in this less than volume function, which is also a part of this code base. I can quickly preview what that looks like for you um, as my comparison function to sort. Um, it's also a part of this options menu.cpp file. So, I'll go ahead and set a breakpoint here, which should be hit when I go into the options menu and make sure that this is working. All right, so options. And all right, good, I hit my breakpoint. So now I can leverage something called just my code debugging. And just my code debugging automatically steps over calls to system, framework, or other non-user code. So when I press F11 here to step into, I'm automatically going to step into the less than volume function instead of stepping into vector or the implementation of sort. So I'll press F11, and I'm brought straight to less than volume uh, or user code. 
Um, I'll step out of that, press F5 to continue, and oops, it looks like my sounds are now in order. All right, so the next productivity feature that I want to show you guys today is called Template IntelliSense. So uh, C++ developers using class, class templates or function templates can now leverage the full power of IntelliSense within their template bodies. So you can hear, see here inside of this template, I'm not getting member list IntelliSense. But if I go up here and specify a sample argument of a roadblock, then you can see I'm getting relevant member list suggestions like get level or get type. I can also hover over R and see that R is a roadblock. If I wanted to go back and specify a different sample argument, so now I'll say snowman, then I could leverage this drop-down menu, which shows me my most recently used sample arguments and makes it easy for me to toggle between them. Uh, Visual Studio 2019 also now has quick info on closing braces. So if I hover over any closing brace, you can see I'm getting information on the first line of this if statement, of the for loop, and of the function itself. Um, the last thing that I'm going to show you guys today is some improvements to our code analysis. So code analysis will now run automatically in the, on the, in the background on file save or whenever you open up a new file. So you can see here, if I scroll down, that I'm getting a code analysis warning indicated with the green squiggles that is warning me to use null pointer rather than null. Um, and so for this specific code analysis rule, we have implemented a quick fix. So if I click show potential fixes, uh, Visual Studio will show me what this change would look like to my code. And then if I apply the change, it'll make the change to my code in this instance. Um, this particular code analysis rule is actually not on by default. And so I can show you how to manage your code analysis rules for a CMake project in particular. Um, you can manage it using this rule set file. And here you can inherit from different rule sets or manually specify exactly which rules you want to be turned on to give you either warnings or errors. Um, so you can see here, the only one I've turned on right now is this use null pointer instead of null warning. Uh, but here I could easily customize that for my project. And for CMake, you do have to pass this rule set file as an argument to CMake settings.json as a code analysis rule set in order for CMake to pick up on it. And that's about all I have for the demo portion today. Uh, we can switch back to the slides now and show a full list of what's new. So yes, this is the full list of everything that's new with Visual Studio 2019. I only had a chance to talk about some of it today. So if you have questions about some of the things that we didn't cover or some of the things that we did cover, you can reach out to our team uh, via Twitter or to either of us or check out blog posts. A lot of these new features have blog posts accompanying them showing you what's new and how to use them. Um, there's two features in particular that I do want to call your attention to that I didn't have time to show today. One of that is live share for C++ developers, and another is a 64-bit out-of-proc debugger process. Um, both of these features are covered in sessions similar to this throughout the day. So as a C++ developer, I would highly recommend that you go check out um, those two sessions as well. And that's about all that we have for the session now. I think we can transition to Q&A. Q&A. Cool. Thank you. Great demo. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> the last time I wrote C++ was a very long time ago. Like, I feel like I'm the guy, like, the first time I learned to drive stick shift, I feel like that's C++, and only experience, <laughs> like, good programmers <laughs> can do that. So I'm going to ask questions that come on, and then I'm going to try to ask questions from my own small brain when it comes to C++. For cross-platform C++ build, will VS 2019 maintain duplicate copy of source code, one in local and another in a remote machine? Consider I try to build for a Linux platform for Windows environment. Um, yeah, so if you're targeting a remote Linux machine, you can copy over your sources and it's usually on by default except if you're using an existing cache. But basically that's also a part of the editor. So if I go down to the advanced settings Let's here. Let's get your screen on there so people can see uh, what you're doing. There you go. I'm back in the CMake settings editor. Uh, my Linux configuration is active right now. 
and um, there's a checkbox here that says copy remote, remote sources to the remote machine and also the copy sources method that defaults to rsync. Fantastic. So here's the thing, like, and this is, I saw this a while back. You're able to actually write C++ code in Visual Studio and debug it in a Linux environment. And not just debugging. I think one important thing to call out is that while we're moving the sources, the build actually happens on the remote machine as well. Yeah. So it's not a cross compilation experience yes. where you kind of have to move the whole Linux environment onto the Windows machine to get those binaries created. Like everything builds on the machine as if you were built on the command line. Whatever experience you're familiar with inside, inside you know, building on the Linux machine, you can bring it inside Visual Studio and Visual Studio can automate that for you. Did you want to add anything to that? I feel like you wanted to say something. Oh, no, I was just uh, in agreement with what Mary was saying. <laughs> Fantastic. She's in agreement. All right, here's another question. Uh, for VS 2019, can we have one solution containing both CMake and C Sharp projects? That was not possible in 2017. So that's a very interesting question. Um, the CMake, so CMake as a tool, uh, built by Kitward does have some support for C Sharp projects. You can interoperate between C++ and C Sharp. Now, when you bring those solutions, uh, those CMake projects inside Visual Studio, you're not going to get though, the assistance you're familiar with for C Sharp projects. Uh, so that's something that uh, we're considering as one of the suggestions uh, that we can improve the Visual Studio experience right now. Um, for now, you will have to switch between solutions and the native CMake experience to get also C Sharp, uh, like nice IntelliSense and debugging capabilities. Awesome. Another question Do I need to install build tools in remote machine for building cross platform C applications in VS 2019? Consider I am building an app for Linux from Windows. Do I need to install GCC, G in remote machines? So yeah, as Marion was saying, we're really just driving the build on your Linux machine. So we do have a couple of dependencies there. Uh, working, we, yeah, GCC, um, GDB, rsync, and SSH are the dependencies that you will need on the Linux machine that you're targeting. These are really good questions that we're getting. I'm and so glad because I would ask dumb things like, hey, you know, how do you manage pointers? Is that still a thing? <laughs> 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 They're laughing at me. Don't manage. They should be. <laughs> Don't manage. They should be laughing at me. Does cross-platform compilers come with VS 2019 installation? Uh, that's a good question. We we do have um, one GCC cross compilation tool set that ships with the Linux workload, uh, but that's specifically targeted uh, for ARM yeah. um, and. Beyond that, you can add any cross-compilation uh, GCC tools that you have and configure them uh, inside Visual Studio. So we, we don't limit to that. But there, there's only one coming in, in Visual Studio. Yeah. Awesome. Just Did you want to add anything? Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> VS20. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. I, I assumed the question was for Linux. Uh, yes. Because oh, yeah. for Windows, we do ship cross-compilers for targeting ARM64, uh, ARM, uh, x86, x64, and we have the full metrics of, of architectures that we support for Visual Studio. So. Like they're inspiring me now to like go and do something in C++. You should. You should. Probably catch my machine on fire is what I'll do. So let's do uh, ES 2019 claims C++ 14 full support, but actually lacks an obscure C++ 11 and later feature Pragma. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the underscore Pragma capital P? Underscore Pragma doesn't come up uh, often enough. Uh, we should talk more about it. Um, so. Uh, we do have uh, support for, for many of the C++ 17 features in the product. Uh, we, we do consider that uh, we are uh, in the compiler, we have implemented all the, all the features from C++ 17 and, and beyond. Um, we should follow up on that particular feature. Maybe uh, they ran into a bug that uh, they assume doesn't work, or maybe that's something that's still on the backlog that we should basically clarify the state of. I'll, I'll follow up offline on Twitter, maybe. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. we want to know. Like, I don't even know <laughs> yes. what it does. I remember Pragma, but with hashtags. Yes, We didn't Pragma call them hashtags back then. <laughs> Pound Pragma. From Keith, uh, what do we have to do to get our G test, test to show up in the Test Explorer? Um, so all you should have to do is get a build. Uh, and as soon as the build ends, Test Explorer will go collect all the binaries from the build and, and populate Test Explorer with those, uh, with those tests. Uh, that should be true for both uh, whether you're using MS Build projects or using CMake projects. Fantastic. So I'm gonna, if I'm going to go and do some C++ things in Visual Studio, I, I honestly love the, the debugging stuff that you showed, like clarifying what the T was and then having, that was amazing. What should I go start with? I haven't done C++ in a very long time. 
I had a very bad experience in college with C++ <laughs> because my professor, <laughs> I did the Minimax algorithm, which is AI old school, and he was measuring memory leaks, and I failed it. Aww. I got a C. Yeah. And so it's, it's burdened me ever since. So what can I do to go back, and how can Visual Studio help me with C++ if I'm a newbie? I, I think it's the right time to go back because with the new standards, uh, C++ 14 and C++ 17, the language has changed significantly. So uh, like dealing with memory leaks is a lot easier now if you, if you use uh, area AI wrappers and you know like smart pointers. Um, we do have uh, tutorials on visualstudio.com, so I'd recommend anyone to, to go in and, uh, and, and try the, you know, the, the hello word and the calculator yep. uh, tutorials that we have on, uh, on the Visual Studio docs. And um, hey, if you ever get stuck, uh, you know, ask us questions. We're, we're here to help. We always try to improve Visual Studio to make it you know, as accessible and uh, um, approachable to people that are just getting started to learn. So. Definitely. Final word? Yeah, no, we have been working on our getting started experience, and so hopefully there's some tutorials out there if you are new to C++, and um, with some of these changes 2019, things are easier for someone who's new to Visual Studio, new to C++, new to CMake, whatever it may be, to navigate and make sense and be more productive with Visual Studio. Well, thank you so much. I feel a lot more confident. I might go do something in C++. <laughs> I might go re-implement that Minimax algorithm. <laughs> I'm, I might. I really am.